Oh, hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm AJ O'Neill. I'm doing some live coding, and what I'm going to be working on is a continuation from last night. There's just two things that have really been bugging me, and I think that once I get them solved, uh, my stream process is going to be a lot, lot easier. So one of them I'm tackling not because it's the most valuable, but because it's the easiest to do next because it's right in line with what I was doing last night which is that I'm going to make the process for when I end a stream, I already have a, a shortcut in my finder here. Let me go grab this real quick. So I got a shortcut in my finder here for where the sources are for the stream. So here's the one that's being generated right now. And so what, what I can do is I can drag and drop Again, I still need to get a little, I want to, I want to have an image display on the screen when I say that, be able to just press it and have a dragon that's dropping something show up anyway. So I can, I can drag and drop this onto here and then give it a name. So I don't know what name I should give it. Actually, I don't even want to give it a name. I want it to read the name from the YAML file that I edit when I start my stream. So anyway, so I'm going to call this extract audio and I might rename it to transcribe audio, but it's going to extract the audio out of this file. It's going to rename the file to the name. That's the title of the stream, which is what you just saw while this was waiting. And then it's going to upload to Otter AI for doing the voice transcription and getting the time codes. So like what you can see here. And so the next piece of this is just that upload part. Uh, somebody else has kind of already done the work. I just need to sift through their stuff and see if I can get what they had ostensibly what they had working, working, or it may not work. We'll see, but that's what we're going to give a shot. So with that all said, let's have a quick word from our, not a sponsor, Mr. Mountain Dew pop a top. My friends, it is time to open focus. And I just put lotion on my hands. So my fingers are slippery. I can't get my Mountain Dew open. Oh, Hey, announcer, what's up? I'm really struggling on this. Th this is not real. This is not real. God. Oh. <laughs> I had to pause and think, wait, am I just doing this for comedic effect or is this really that hard? And then I came to the conclusion that was particularly hard. The other day, the tab snapped in half. It must be a bad manufacturing, you know, little little inconsistencies that they need to, to, to switch out the tooling uh, after after this batch or something. Ah, uh, okay. Mm, that's good. It's not as cold as I want, but I, I don't know how that could be. Well, I guess it's been sitting here longer than I would have thought. Cause I think it sat down about 40 minutes ago. Yeah, I did actually. Cause I, there was a bunch of administrative. I was sick for a couple days. I got a bunch of stuff to take care of such as life. So I, I've been sitting down here for 40 minutes going through crap before I actually started, but here, here we are. So continuing from yesterday. So I've got this file, which I might as well just create a completely different file actually because this one is for a completely different process than the other one that we're about to create. So this one is going to be upload. That one's going to be used for creating blog content. And this one, you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to create a little file called MKJS and we're going to echo out what uh, we're going to use here. Doc was it EOF. Um, how does it work like this? Oh, I can't remember. There's some silly thing that you can do. All right. So we're going to echo into whatever. The... I, I'm going to create a file that creates JavaScript files for me. I used to have this back in the day, but just that it has the stupid boilerplate that nobody cares about. Right. My file name, you'll notice in bash, I always use my underscores, the prefix for the local variables, probably use local as well, I guess, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to quit out of this and then open it back up. So it gets the syntax highlighting. Other people know the command that you should press to do that. I've got a buddy at work now that I, it, and he's every time he watches me use Vim, he just cringes because he actually knows how to use it. And I'm an idiot. So 
Um, I mean, people think I'm a Vim master. Oh, you type so fast. Yeah, I do. But I, I have, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, um, so this one is going to be, by the way, um, this is one of the, you know, all the hangout sessions, feel free to ask questions. Uh, feel free. We can go on tangents, all the hangout sessions. It's all good in the neighborhood. So, and I'm going to, I'm going to protect myself here. Double burnt to protect myself from idiocy. And what I mean by that is if I accidentally run this twice, you know what I ought to do though? I ought to do this. If, mm, no, I'll just, I'll just do it like that. This is good enough. I don't want to actually do all the if, this, that, the other. Okay, so we're going to do this and then we're going to say use strict and then some stuff, some stuff, some stuff. Yeah, let me just, this is pretty much going to be in every file I ever make these parts right here. Not the otter stuff, but there's always a require.env. There's always an async main. Uh, that I always, well, in this one I didn't, but typically what I want to do is, let's see, this will be console.log hello world. So typically what I want to do is dot catch and then console.error fail and then console.error error.stack or error. Every error should have a stack trace, but in case it doesn't, you know, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. I'd love to know who you are, what brings you here, what would you like to learn? Feel free, we can go on tangents tonight. It's gonna be fine. This is a hangout sesh, and I am um, I'm working through stuff for to improve my my streaming process. Okay, did you want to use cat instead? Yeah, I did want to use cat instead. That's actually I don't know why I put echo there. I meant cat. Uh, okay, local is only valid and functions great. That's what I thought. That's why I don't use it all the time. Okay, so let's uh, let's test this out. So now I'm going to run. Oh, I need to schmod mkjs. And now I should be able to run mkjs upload.js. And then if I go in there, we should see, hey, did that work? All right, I'm going to get rid of this file. I'm going to do it again. Okay. So the one thing, a few things that should be done here. Actually, I'm going to copy this out. This is This should not be in there. Uh, this should have error. There we go. I probably should have created this here first and then exported it. Oops. Oh, and I, I just messed it up again, but that's okay. Um, here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I don't, let's see. Yeah, this should work fine. Getting rid of all this. So that now, this is just my template JavaScript file that whenever I'm making node files, this is really what I want to start with every time. So I should have done this years and years ago. In fact, I did do this years and years ago. There's so many things. If you are a budding developer, and I just found a talk from a Google engineer today that says this, and it's what kind of strengthened me to, in my resolve that, yes, I know what the right thing to do is. Yeah, I'm being stupid when I don't do this. Anytime you do something three times on the third time that you do it, you should automate it. So if you find, oh, okay, I set up a file and I set it up like this, then don't, don't worry about trying to automate everything. But by the time you get to the third time where you're doing something that's pretty much the exact same thing as what you've done the other two times. And certainly by the time you get to the fourth time, stop what you're doing, drop it. it yes. Your employer is going to pay for it. Yes. Uh, the client's going to pay for it, whatever. Yes. This is normal. This is an assumed cost and it's going to save them money over, over time. Right. Cause the, and, and you really don't want to do the tedious stuff anyway, automate things, automate your processes, create templates for the way you do your HTTP stack, the way you do your CLI stack, whatever it is you're working on, get your process in place. Okay. So I'm going to remove this again and MKJS upload.js. And then let's take a look at it. And then the other thing that needs to happen is this. So I actually have a .js hint 
and I've got a little sed command here. So this is what I'm going to put in my MKJS as well, is if we do not have um, so I want, I want to check this out. So if not exist dot js hint rc, then I'm just going to paste this command right here. Let's see, is that going to work? Hmm, that's interesting. Why is my bash formatting not working? Webby, uh, spumped and shell check. Those should already be installed. What? Schwumpt wasn't installed? That makes no sense. What the heck? I did just re uh, I did just do the, the operating system update, so it, it may be or maybe that's a new version that it downloaded. There was already one there and then it upgraded to the newest version or something. I would I would just be really weirded out. Or is it because it doesn't know it's a shell file? Is that why it's not being formatted? Because it's not called dot sh. That might be what it is. I might need to have it end in dot sh. I don't think I've got it set up to know by the magic string at the beginning of the file that it should be formatting it and checking it as a bash file. So let me rethink my life on that real quick. I'm actually going to put the real thing as mkjs.sh, and then I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to link mkjs.sh to mkjs. And then I should still be able to run mkjs. And then I should also be able to edit this like so. All right, now it's getting the proper formatting as it should. Okay, and then I got to make sure to get this, get my little utils into a repository at some point. But yeah, so I want to be able to get my JSON, uh, JS hint RC in there. I also want to make sure that I get, do I have an ESLint template? I don't think I do yet because I'm not fully converted over to ESLint yet. Okay, but this one, um, I guess that is my, hmm. Are there, is there any difference between these two? Let me do a diff on this real quick. Okay, there's no difference between these two. So actually, I don't want a top level prettier RC because that'll mess with things. That's one of the reasons I have this name so weird. Okay, and so then let's go in here. This way, I don't even have to worry about doing it. It's just going to be automatic. I, again, it, this is one of those things that's so dumb I didn't just do this years ago. This should have been a standard part of my setup files that I have on every computer that I own. Um, and it's it's a pity that I have not. But whatever. We're doing it now. That's what matters. Okay, so... There we go. And let's try that out... I guess we might as well do this actually. So we're going to do like, so like that. Oh, that looks so ugly. How about this? Let's try it a different way. I'm going to try this a different way. I'm going to move this down. So install my standard dot JS hint RC if needed. Install my standard dot prettier rc.json if needed and then quit if the file already exists okay and i'm going to move this down here now nah, i'm going to leave it up there for now so if it does exist then exit zero that way i don't have to have a weird wonky do thing with um, these. And there is a way that you can have it indent and have it eat the indent, but I, mm, let me see if I, let me see if I can try it. I think it's when you do triples. No, it's not when you do triples. Is it when you do triples without this? No. There's a way you can have it eat the indent. Maybe it's like this. Is it this one? Is it like that? And then we go like this. 
and then that should convert to tabs. Nope, didn't work. Okay, so not gonna do that way then. Gonna leave it like this. And I don't remember the difference between the double and the triple, but I think that this is gonna work just fine, so we'll go with it. And we put this in quotes if we don't want any string interpolation inside of here, which we don't. So we want all of this to be treated as a little string. So there's some bash for you tonight, ladies and gents. Feel free to say hello if you want to. By the way, I do uh, respond to niceties. It's a little bit, a little bit slow tonight. A little bit slow uh, last night too. That's okay. We can hang out as quiet people. All right. So now my question is, what does this look like? Um, you know, and one more thing that I ought to do. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. this is not what I wanted to do tonight, but this is going to help me overall. So I should say created.js hint RC created dot. Mm, and then eh, what we could do, we could say else found. Yeah. So and then, then we could echo, whoops, this is not what we want. That was wrong here. We want this. And then in this echo, we would say, this exists. And it would be cool to kind of do a thing, just add the dot JS at the end. Um, skipping file already exists. Yeah, that's good. Um, bum, 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 bum. and then we'll do created again. Yeah. Down here we'll do created my file name, yada, yada, yada. There we go. Again, I should have done this 10 years ago. The fact that I'm doing it tonight is just absurd. All right, there we go. That's great. Uh, one other change I want to make to that is just to put an initial echo here. I like to have mm. perfect. All right, so now I've got my my JS file maker my bobber. Get rid of my JS hint RC, my dot prettier. Um, wait a minute. What's going on? That didn't work. JS hint RC. Ah, I see the problem. I had the name wrong right here. Okay. Good thing I tested it out. Always good to test your stuff. Cool. All right, now why is this complaining? LE detail. Oops, something went wrong. Couldn't find any configuration file. Please run npm init. Um, okay, so ESLint is just complaining because I don't have an ESLint file, but I don't really want to set that up right now, so I'm going to ignore that. Time for another sip of focus. Oh, that burns a little. Mm. That's how you know it's a good sip. Okay. So I do need the otter stuff here. So let me copy this bit over. Which I'd gotten rid of so that I could create this thing as such. All right. Email, password, init. To do. Upload some stuff. How do you spell stuff like that? And then we're going to need to get 
console.log process.argv2, I think it is. Actually, we want to do let's input equals. We Before we do the login to Otter, since that takes a lot of time, we want to get our file name. So video file is going to be this. And then we can, let's see. Um, we could check this fs dot exists. Oops. I think I want fs dot promises. By the way, do you have any questions about coding there? Uh, announcer, I, I assume you're still on the stream. Okay. All right, and I, I need to check and see if this is still, I think that exists got deprecated. Let's see, FS access, all right. All right, so here's what we wanna do. And let's see if we can access the video file. And what does that return? True, false? Just false. There's nothing in the callback except for the error. Hmm. Fills with undefined upon success. All right, so let's do this. Let error equals, I actually kind of like this syntax, although a lot of people would find it strange. But we're gonna do let error equals, and then if not error, or I guess if error, uh, console.error process.exit1 return. Um, cannot access video file cannot read video file and then what uh, we're gonna have air dot message maybe seems reasonable and then process exit okay so now what I can do with this file is I can say, well, first let's do this. Let's do chmod a plus x upload because I want to be able to do that. Um, and then let's go ahead and give this its uh, shebang up here is what this is called. User bin env node. That's saying figure out what node is in the user's environment and run that node as opposed to running the system node which is absolutely what we'll want to do. All right, so let me do upload doesn't exist. Cannot read doesn't exist. No such file or directory. All right, that's wonderful, cool. So that's good. And this is part of my thing, you know, I always say this, you have to think about programming backwards. Think about the exit conditions first which I don't know that I actually did that. I just happened to end up in this place, but it's the right place to be, is that you think about the exit conditions first. How do things go wrong? How does it fail? How does it not work? Or how how do we know that it's been completely successful? But you wanna, you wanna try to traverse the tree of logic down to what's the lowest, furthest piece, and then kind of work back from there. Uh, and for us, well, 
and, and that this is not the furthest piece. This is not the total end result. The total end result is that an upload works, but we have to file that we're uploading. Um, and we, if, if the file doesn't exist, we want to give the user some good feedback. The user in this case is me and I, it's good to be able to see, oh, here's that thing that wasn't working. And I think I'm going to do this as well. We'll see how this works out. Let me try, uh, I'm just putting some space in there. That looks good, except that I put the space in the wrong place, but otherwise looks good. Yeah, I should leave the tab in there. Yeah, that looks great. Love it. Okay. So now, if I get the, I guess this actually should be audio file, not video file, but mm, we'll see because I may shell out to do FFmpeg with this uh, and, and run my audio extractor that way. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call it, let's just call it file name for now. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to say what type of file it is that we're working on right now. It's just file name. We'll, we'll figure out the rest or file path. I guess it should be technically speaking, uh, file name, file path. Boop, boop, boop. All right, good. All right. Now we want to figure out from the stuff we were looking at before, uh, yesterday, Let me go look at the code for this again. I want to be able to see where was upload being called upload validate upload service. I'm so confused about why this is using three different request libraries. I mentioned that yesterday it's using Axios request promise and request. And that just seems so strange to me. I just don't understand why would Axios alone not work on its on its own. And I'll probably fork this and fix it to my liking. Okay. XML response. Upload speech. And what is file in this case? Is file what? Um, what are, okay, how is upload speech being used? I'm guessing that file is a file stream, a read stream. I have difficulty reading these new syntaxes where they're eliding objects to copy them and blah, 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 blah. Upload options, response, upload options, response. So speech upload params and then file is elided as no, it's added. I'm going to guess that this is a read stream. That's what I'm going to guess. And is upload speech actually, is it exported or what's the deal here? Is this a class or something? Oh gosh. What is that syntax? I, is this Ruby script or coffee script? I mean, no, this is JavaScript. What, is, what, what is this one of those things where, okay. That's new syntax for me. That looks very Ruby-esque. Does not look very JavaScripty. I don't know what that means. I'm kind of curious. I'm going to look that up real quick. Uh, JavaScript class syntax hash probably means private method or non-enumerable or something like that. They're adding all sorts of syntax sugar into the language. And it, it's just, it bugs me. It drives me nuts. Everybody that watches knows that.
Mm, okay, this is not what I want. No, I don't want hash tables. <sighs> JavaScript classes. Yeah, I, nobody needs to use JavaScript classes. JavaScript classes do not solve a problem that someone who is a JavaScript developer has or will have, as far as I'm aware. Okay, private members are declared using pound. Okay. Hash names. All right, I... Yeah, I don't know about all this. They're just, they're, they're trying so hard to make it C-sharp. Microsoft is driving the JavaScript committee right now. And so that's why every year it's more and more C-sharp nonsense because Microsoft doesn't like JavaScript. They've never liked JavaScript. They've been in charge of the committee uh, a couple of times over the years. Thankfully, they lost control before um, ECMAScript 4 and then ECMAScript 5. Yahoo was in control of JavaScript. Okay, so what did I learn here? Nothing useful, right? I just need to go to upload and I need to try otter.upload speech and then I need to give it a file stream. So we're gonna do let read stream equals fs. Dot this is one of the things that I don't like about their change to the FS module. Just because the FS module has promises, I don't think that means that create read stream shouldn't exist. So now I need to do FS, I don't know, sync, I guess is what to call it. Because they should have, they should have just left those, even though great read stream doesn't, return a promise, they should have left it on that API. All right, and we're gonna pass in file path. And then we're gonna pass the read stream to upload speech. And then what? What do we, let, let me see what we get back. Let's look at the source code again and get out of here. Upload speech. I will be interested to see, oh, okay. And this freaks me out too. So the, notice that there's no function body here. So this has an implicit return. Ugh. I just don't, I just don't like that sort of thing. If you're gonna, if it's gonna span multiple lines, don't rely on white space to, Ugh. okay. Um, and I wonder, normally, do we have in here a user agent? I don't have a user agent in here. We normally, when you connect to an API, they require there to be a user agent. But then, in, if they didn't expose the API publicly, but I, I would, I would actually, what I would do for this is I would have a fallback um, user agent, and then I would also have maybe a resource to be able to get the latest Chrome user agent and use that since that's probably what they're using anyway, and then fill it in with the same as the operating system that they're coming from and that sort of thing. That would actually be a good service if somebody wants to make that service. And hello to those of you that are joining in. My name's AJ O'Neill. I'd love to know uh, who you are and what brings you to the channel tonight. Um, feel free to, we can go off track. We can talk smack. We can have each other's back. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. Form action. What? 
Okay, so this has got the XML response, finish response, finish response dot data. Okay, so we do have something that comes back here. I will be interested to find out what it is. We're going to try doing both of these. Because I don't know what type of object this is. But I think I had to delete me a small file that was just called delete me. So we're going to do that. We're going to do upload, downloads, delete me, M4A. And it would be nice because this can take a long time. All right, status OK. It would be nice if we got some feedback on the data as it's being read. I wonder how we could do that. Let's. Let me think on that for a second. So once we are already doing the upload, this, this is what I would like to do. I'm going to get rid of the await here. And then on that file stream, I'm going to have an on readable. No, I don't want unreadable. What do I want? I'm going to do on data on this one. I'm not quite sure what the right way to do it. Basically, I, I want to spy on the data. Um, let's see. Let total equals. I think on the read stream, we get the total bytes that are going to be uploaded. So let me go check on that. No JS FS. Whoops. I didn't mean to do FIS. Let's get back here and notice that I just like every other developer with 15 years of experience or more constantly refer to the docs because I have a small brain like everyone and I cannot hold everything in my head. No one is, this is a, a thing I see come up a lot. People say, Oh, am I ever going to learn? When, when am I, when am I not going to have to Google every five seconds? Well, sometime, but you will always have to look up the core documentation. What's up? Uh, no, I cannot. Um, I can maybe see it in my text messages. Uh, eight, six, seven, 800. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, where was I? I was looking for read stream, create read stream and FS read stream, FS read stream. I am expecting to have, okay. Bytes read. Ah, there we go. So we have bytes read and we have dot pending. We have dot path. Mm. Number of bytes have been read so far. This doesn't do a stat first. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so here's here's what we'll do is I will do let's see on readable. So I won't consume anything, but I'll look for rs.bytes read console.log bytes read. This is going to print out too much stuff to the screen and what I'm going to want to do about it is when there is, I forget whether it's close or end. It's probably um, on end. I think on end I want to close. I don't remember exactly. I think it's on close or on end we want to close. 
because this is not necessary. This is a thing that you can easily, if whenever you're working with upload services, no matter what language you're using, this is something that can easily be a problem is if you forget to close the file handle when it's done reading, because just because the file has reached the end of the, the data that it has to give you does not mean that you necessarily closed it or that the process that you, you gave uh, is necessarily going to close it. Because a lot of times what will happen is you will maybe say, for example, on, on the actual file system, you might have a file one, file part two, file part three, or something like that, where you, for optimizations of the service, to be able to chunk things apart. If it's a multi-gigabyte file, you might chunk it into a hundred megabyte chunks so you can disperse it across a storage system or something like that. This happens. And so uh, most of the file readers will read a file till completion, but they don't close the file or they don't close the stream because you might be putting something else on the stream. And so a lot of streams and lots of languages are just left open. And so you want to call close manually. There's never, there's never any harm in just calling close again once something is done. Um, if it's already been closed, because it's just a no-op, it just does nothing. All right, so in any case, in both of these, I think what I want to do, console.log bytes read, um, total, and what would be really cool, but I don't want to take the time to do right now, would be, well, let me finish that thought in just a second here, would be to have the progress bar update in place. So you can, you can take the cursor and bring it back to the beginning of the screen and then rewrite it on every single update, which actually maybe that's not that hard. That's probably pretty easy nowadays. Um, no JS, what is it called? Standard. Well, no, nah, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. Basically, I just want to put a ticker every so many bytes that are red. I don't know what those bytes should be, but, um, you know, say every, I don't, I don't know what it should be, but every, every so often. Oh, one thing that we could do actually, here, here's what we could do. Um, we could just print a dot to the screen. That would be really simple to do. Uh, let's see. Because the one thing, I, I don't want to destroy pipes and I don't want to have to implement all the pipe detection. If there was a nice library that just did that for us, maybe I'd consider, ah, I'm going down a rabbit hole. I need to stop right now. I just want to get this done. All right, total, This I'm going to call this total end and I'm going to call this total close just so I can tell the difference between the two. So I know, because I really just want to use whichever one comes last. That's all that I care about. And then for this one, I just want to say red. Um, whoops. And bytes. So let's try this out. Let's see how this works. And I'm expecting to see a flurry of... Oh, whoops. That was not the one that I wanted. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's not working. I broke something. Okay, so it timed out. That makes sense. All right. All right, so so this is somewhat poor API design. Um uh, Mostly I would blame this on the creators of Node.js because they were young college students and did, weren't thinking everything through. And then as they grew up, they left and left their mess for the rest of the world to figure out. Um, they went on to work in languages like Go and Rust and be big members of the communities there. So essentially... We need to set a timeout here of say 500 milliseconds. I think that might be a good spacer. Um, I 
I'm just going to put a comment. Steam is reasonable enough. And then let's see if my shrug will work here. So if I do shrug, I didn't worry about it. Sometimes it works. If I do it up here, there we go. I can just copy it that way. Oh. So we're just going to have a magic wait time. And then we're going to start listening for bites red. And what, there's three events that it could be. It could be end, it could be close, or it could be something else. Um, all right, let data equals await resp data data. Okay, let's see how this works now. There we go. So close is what happens last. I wanna see if close gets called all on its own. Let's find out if I don't call close, if the file handle is closed by the process that's reading in the file. Okay, it does. All right, so I don't have to call close myself. I can wait for on data. So the thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to trigger on data before whatever this thing needs to do triggers on data. So that's why I'm putting in um, this magic wait time is to allow this API time to start reading the data. So it's the one that has control of it. And then I'm ensuring that I'm the second reader on the data. I'm just going to see what happens if I do this though. I think it might have an adverse effect. Yep, it does. Okay, this is necessary um, to give the HTTP callback time to take control of the stream before spying on it. Now, it would be interesting to see, you know, what could we shorten this to? Could we shorten it down to 100? Would that always work? Would that, no, it doesn't. All right, so that actually is interesting. So if we shorten it, it doesn't work. Let's try this. Okay, yeah, makes all the difference in the world. Oh, but this makes me sad because here's, let's see, let me think about this. So let's say that they are on a really crappy network connection. Maybe, well, no, because, because there should be a connection pool. The HTTP agent is going to keep a connection pool um, under the hood. And with that connection pool, everything should get queued up and be ready within 500 milliseconds. But then again, I'd say that that should be done within, uh, well, well, we're going to give it, we're going to give it a wait. We're going to give it a bigger wait. Um. Uh, do, do, do. This delay is necessary to give the HTTP callback time to take control, control of the read stream before we start spying on it. Okay. Uh, we set the number pretty high because... Um, that time is dependent upon network connection speed and other things that we don't know <laughs> that this code can't know. All right, so I don't like having this kind of stuff in code, obviously. In fact, I think that I need to make this um, another function. What should we call this? 
Should we call this um, show progress? I think that's what I'm going to call it. Just so, because it's, it needs that comment. And then I actually want to turn this whole thing into um, return new promise function resolve. Um, and then in close here, we'll just do resolve and then bytes red. So we'll move this over here. Interesting. Yeah. So let's do this. Let total equals, and then we'll just console.log uploaded so many bytes. And then by this, by that time, of course, this will have already resolved, which is just fine. Oh no, the bots block. Boom. All right. We got rid of and another bot down and another bot down and another bot bites the dust. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Another bot bites the dust. There we go. I wanted to bring that in a little bit more. There's too much headroom. We only need a little bit. So So this is my little hack resolve And then kind of a funny thing If we don't, so I, I would say this, we need two timeouts. So we also need set timeout, let uh, time bomb equal, uh, let's see, set timeout, electrancy. Uh, actually, I'm not a game developer, as it were. But I don't think that they had a category for just software developer. I think it was software and game developers. But yes, hello. Um, I'm not, no, I'm not developing a game. I, I am working on something actually for the stream. So I'm, there's this transcription service called Otter AI. And I'm making it so that basically when this video is done recording in OBS, I can just drag and drop the file name onto a script, hit enter, and then go to bed. And then when my digital assistant uh, picks it up in the morning, he'll have the transcription and I don't have to, he doesn't have to go split the audio and upload it and I don't have to do that, that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, t tell me about you. What do you do? What uh, what do you what language do you develop in? What 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 game are you working on? So and the thing that I'm working on right now is I'm overcoming an issue with this is this is a pretty common issue in Node.js, but it's an issue with knowing when um, another process has finished reading a file and be able to report progress on it. Um. Okay, so we're going to call this one time bomb. I'm going to say set timeout and we're going to give it an additional one second or I don't know, five seconds. Uh, or maybe, yeah, we'll probably just make it an additional one second. So we're going to reject new error um, timeout. Well, no, we could just, maybe we could just resolve because if this has. 
if the time bomb ah dang it hmm console dots warn um hmm. taking too long to read the file uh let's see mm. warn not showing progress because it took too long mm. because something's taking too long all right so this could work or this could not work i don't want to say what it is i'm going to resolve this uh, but the moment that that we sorry i'm having too many thoughts at the same time right now okay and then i'm going to check out the comments all right so th this is what we're going to do so we're going to set this time bomb and say uh, we should do it maybe this way i guess this is just fine magic wait time plus magic wait time let's call it that or just magic wait time times two all right so if the if the time bomb has not been disarmed so we could do this if time bomb actually we could do this we could do rs on data once here we go this this is what we need clear timeout time bomb all right so we're going to say the time bomb takes twice it will wait twice as long as adding the listener and if the time bomb is not disarmed in that time so the clear timeout time bomb then we're going to resolve this and the reason we're going to do that is so that the thing that's actually supposed to be reading the file, if it had an error, and the reason that we're not able to show progress is because there was some error with it, we want this show progress to fall forward, or maybe, uh, maybe I just want to redo it this way. Okay, that, that feels, yeah, that feels too complex. We're going to get rid of the magic time bomb thing. Let me go back. I think I can just do it this way where... I'm going, this is progress promise. And I, sorry, I will read that comment in just a second. I just need to get through this thought here before I stray away from it. You know how it goes. So how about we're, we're just going to get a show progress equals progress promise. And then we're going to let total equals await progress promise. But we're going to do that after we await the data. Or I guess... Maybe we could just say, set this up beforehand. Nah, do it like this. Set, or we could set it up beforehand and then we could do a wait. And then we don't have to have this extra wait here. And then we could just call this data. Okay, all right. I, this is the way that I, that I want to do it. We're going to create the read stream and we're going to show, we're going to set it up to show progress, but that's going to wait two seconds. So has a delay. All right. Then we're going to wait for the upload to be done. If it fails, it's going to throw the error. Then we're going to wait for the... No, dang it. I had it right with the time bomb thing. No, if this throws an error... If it throws an error, then we've already canceled. If it doesn't throw an error, it was successful, and so we can wait the total. All right, sorry. Let me uh, let me let me check this out here. Uh, Develop games as a side hobby. Haven't officially published anything yet. Well, do you have any links you want to share? Uh, you can't share links here. Let me give you a link to if you. Well, maybe you can. I I may have turned back on link sharing. You know how it is with the bots and stuff, and I hardly have much of a channel, so I don't. Uh, have anything to help with that yet but if you want to join the discord if you have a link to games that you've been developing and if you just want to join in you know feel free but um i will be happy to repost that in the channel if you want to tell us a little bit about it 
Yeah, so I'm writing this tool in JavaScript because the API that I found was written in JavaScript. My three languages are Go, Node, and Rust. That's what I primarily do. And I'm very familiar with browser programming, but I don't write JavaScript the way other people do because I think it's way too complicated. And the, one of the reasons, well, the reason that I like JavaScript and the reason that I like Go is because they're very, they can be very simple languages. JavaScript is super easy to make complicated. Go, people can make complicated, but by default, it is uh, very simple if you if you just follow what they ask you to follow. Well, hello, hello, and welcome. You did join the channel. How nice of you. Uh, it's pretty low volume still. Yep, I saw. I saw. Power, uh, Fusion Powered AI. Mm-hmm. Where are you from? What, uh, did you already say that? Okay. So that I, I don't like this because this is, this is just, it's just messy. All right. Sorry. This is just messy because, because it is. Boom. Um, show. All right. So first, register. <sighs> Timeout to get byte count. Two is going to be um, All right, two is going to be upload read stream. This must get access first. This must control the stream, but has an unknown, but has unknown delay. Um, three, wait for uh, the progress to finish won't happen if there was an error and then uh yeah okay Create a read stream that will have two readers. I read all right. Um, add progress reader with delay so that it doesn't control the read stream. There we go. That's the nice way to say that. Upload read stream. Um, we don't know how long this will take to read first byte. Wait for the progress to finish. Um, won't happen if there was an upload error. The HTTP error. Okay, this should be the way of it. So 99% of the time, it's going to take more than two seconds to upload the file. So we don't have a problem there. And um, yeah, we're good. Huntsville, nice. So one of my, my best buddies is out in Georgia. Are you, uh, so it's Huntsville, it's Huntsville more a city area, I'm assuming. Cause it seems to be, I know that name and I'm not really that super familiar with the East coast. So I'm assuming that must be city area, not rural area. Are you more of city folk or country folk? I'm more country folk in my heart. I grew up listening to country music. I still profess that I love country music, but I rarely listen to it. But when I am at Texas roadhouse or something like that, 
I really enjoy it. Okay. So this is looking good now. All right, let me try this. We're going to upload the delete me. Cool. This is great. So I just need to maybe print out the first one. And then after the first one, um, I think I want maybe every 10 megabytes and then the last one. I think that's, that's a good way to look at this is maybe every 10 megabytes. So Hmm. Let counter equal zero. Um, counter plus equals RS dot bytes red. I don't actually care about the chunk at all. And then I'm going to say if a counter greater than or equal to Let's call this MB1024. It doesn't really matter what it is. Let's say if it's greater than 1 million. Is that 100,000? Then let's do uh, what? Let's And it's going to be bytes read. I don't, I don't do expressions inside of template strings and I recommend that no one do it. And we'll do this to fixed and we'll do it to fixed two. So I do want a once though. So we're gonna divide this by, I guess it should be a million, right? We'll just do marketer math. We won't do real programmer math. One, two, three, there we go. That's just easier to read if we say million. And then we need to reset our counter back to zero. Okay. Let me check out what we got over here. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. I'm AJ O'Neill. I am working on this uh, upload tool from for my stream. And the purpose of the tool, you know, I kind of want to, um, I'm just going to call this show. Is to handle the audio transcriptions for the stream. So this stream will be uploaded with this script. That's the goal is uh, by the end of the stream to get that. And then I've got another project I'm working on tonight. I'm going back to working on the, uh, one of the, one of the dash projects, the digital cash, uh, project dash digital cash. All right. And then what do we want here? Show. All right, this is looking good. But I kind of want this. Mm, I don't know, it's so small. I think it, we don't need to do an early return on this. If it goes one line longer, I'm doing an early return though. Mark my words. Okay. Okay, this looks good. Oh, we don't need a chunk for that.
All right. Is this thing even 10 megabytes though? Downloads, delete me, M4A. I don't think it's even 10 megabytes. Whoa. Why'd my nerd font get deleted? Uh, I just uploaded, or up to uploaded, updated Mac OS. And it looks like my, my nerd font got deleted. I don't know. No, it didn't. It just doesn't. Why does it not know what M4A is? It should know that's an audio file. Hey, where'd my mouse cursor go? Come back. There you are. Hey, let's uh, change this up a little bit. Let's uh, switch to the other camera. Hello. Yeah. Whoa, wait. What's this right here? What's this thing? What is that? Is that... Oh, is there a notification? Oh! Oh! My battery's low. That's weird. Battery shouldn't be low. Because, you know, the phone's plugged in. Obviously, because we're looking at it. Hmm. Strange. Yeah, well. So it is. So it is. Yeah, and, um, you know what? Just for funsies, because uh, we didn't do this yet. You know, we got something working. It would have been a lot better if I did that way back when we actually got the thing working, but hey, better late than never. But uh, let's let's try this again. I just got a stream deck, so I'm I'm having fun with it. Hmm. Well, this does not look right to me. Uh, that's not ten megabytes. What, what, did somebody see, why was my math wrong here? Counter. Okay, this was just a once. So that one's a once. And this one. Um, I'm not really clear... If counter is greater than or equal to a million. Oh, hmm. I see where there's a problem. And actually, that probably should be 10 million. Okay. So what we don't have from this is a delta. So I think what I wanted to do was say chunk dot, chunk dot length here. That's what I should do. Chunk dot length. And that might be the might should be byte length. Although I, I guess it's the same. Now let's try this one more time. I probably should test this progress feature separately. Cool. And I'm actually gonna make this. 10 million. Mm, how about maybe 5 million? Uh, what, what do we call this? Not, it's, is it called interval? It is the increment. Yeah, I think I need to change this to increment. Okay. So that's good enough. And then... Hold on. Freaks me out. And that little piece of paper up there makes a bunch of noise. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the other camera now. Woo! Higher quality. AJ and HD, as it were. Okay. And then we should say what the total number of megabytes was, I suppose. So this is really aesthetic, but it's one of those things that uh, it's important to me. Uh, 
And I actually want to put this as a two fixed three. And then I want to say, hmm. Oh, whoops. So I guess this is the increment and this should actually be million. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I just want to have this in the end. No, no. Mm -hmm. Now that's good. That's, let me just leave it like that. It uploaded that many bytes. It's done. Okay, cool. So this works. I'm excited about that. That's great. I could break it any time because it's an undocumented API, but it works. And Okay. All right, I'm going to try this one more time and then think about what the next step needs to be. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to test it with last night's stream. Hmm, maybe I should do show, actually. All right, just one more time. Uh, all right, logging in, uploading. And then again, maybe I do want to go. Let precision equal to precision. Precision. And then let's go ahead and add that spacer on here. And successfully logged into Otter AI. I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, console.info. I just wanna put a new line there basically. So uploading. I've got another idea for this too. So we're going to do show progress. I'm going to do uploading. And then we're going to put in like that. Total number of bytes. And then I want a little bit of space at the end. Okay, now let's run this one line. I think this is the last time before we do something real. And I might go clean those delete me's up. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. So the next bit, uh, how long have I been a coder? So I am, I think I'm 35 years old. You kind of, you know, it doesn't matter anymore after you get married. You just get older. Uh, and I probably started coding when I, the first code I ever wrote was probably around 15-ish. Uh, maybe a little earlier than that. But I started learning the program on purpose when I graduated from high school. And then I, I became a, a tech at a local high school. When I graduated, I applied and, and they, they may see, they basically made me the person that carted around the TVs from one room to another in the classrooms. But what I did was I, I modified, um, uh, a program that I installed locally and made available to all the teachers that would register who wanted what. So instead of calling me, they would just register it on their computer. So instead of calling the computer lab, and I also got rid of all the computer viruses across the entire school. And I got all, each lab that had a specific type of computer. So for each type of computer that we had in the school, which I think we had two or three different types of computers, I, I used one of those Linux disk streaming disk formatting programs so that I could just get every computer in the school on the exact same version of Windows with the same software installed because before they were doing it one by one for a hundred different computers. I mean, it takes less time to figure out how to build the solution than to, you know, go through all the computers. So I, once I'd done that within the first couple of months of that being my job, the rest of my time was freed up to basically do whatever I wanted because I'd automated my job away and they were happy with that. <laughs> and so that's when I was really learning. I had that, that free time. And then when I got to college, when I got to college is when it really kicked off because then I was around people that were way smarter than me because before then I was kind of on my own. I was the smartest person in the room in most rooms. Uh, so that was difficult. I mean, I know that sounds super arrogant, whatever. I don't care. That's the way that it was. And so it was hard for me to learn more because I didn't have mentorship. Uh, most people were not as ambitious as I was. You know, it was high school. Most kids just wanted to screw off and play video games. And they didn't, even though I was, I got into a technical program, the other kids, they weren't actually studying the technical program most of the time. So I finished all three years of the program um, in just one year. And it was really weird. So, okay, story time. Josh, highlight this clip, please. So story time. I, I went to a technical high school in Vermont and they, they, they actually it was a two year program. I, there, if there had been a third year, it was anyway. So that they, they made a deal that if you pass the exam, the technical exam, which was the CompTIA A plus exam, which is basically if you want to get an entry level job in IT, basically tech support, answering phone calls for, for example, a school or a business, you know, really low tier support, but proves you've got the basics of how to use Windows and uh, some networking and maybe just like this much Linux. So the A plus exam, if you pass the exam, you got an A for the year. And so after a few weeks of class, I realized that if I did the homework, the homework was going to take me so much time to do that I'd basically never be able to finish the exam early or not that I, it would take a long time to, to get to the point. So I, I said, okay, well, if the grade is based on passing the exam, then I'm not doing the homework anymore. I'm not attending the lectures in class and I am just studying for the exam. And so I studied for the exam and I passed it in the second quarter and the grades were taken at the end of the second quarter and the end of the fourth quarter. So I passed the exam before the end of the second quarter and I was failing the class because I wasn't doing any of the homework. 
<laughs> but I passed the exam and then they reneged on their offer. Cause they said, if you, if you pass the exam, you got an A for the year. Well, no one had ever taken them up on it like that and got it done in the middle of the second quarter. And so in the third quarter, they said, well, actually we have to have you take the second year program because we can't actually justify this, I guess, legally or something. You know, there was an issue where they, they couldn't, they, they couldn't hold to their word, which is, you know, fine by me. Cause I was already studying basically the second year stuff. Anyway, um, I'd moved on to studying Linux. And so then I, I, again, same thing. There was no homework for me to do essentially. Cause it was just, you know, Hey, you'd go past the exam. So I did that. I, I just studied, I actually studied the Linux stuff first, and then I studied the networking stuff because Network Plus was the second year program. And Network Plus was so easy after doing A, uh, a Plus because A Plus is you know, somewhere between half and three quarters of what you need for Network Plus because you just have to know about all the DNS and IP and host file and all those things. So you need to learn, you do need to learn significantly more, but I don't know that I had to study for it as much as just take a bunch of practice exams it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't study for it the way that I studied for A plus or that I'd studied for Linux plus. So I got that done. And then it was actually the week after, uh, graduating that I took the Linux plus exam, which would have been, if they had a third year, that's what the third year would have been. That's what the, 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 the teacher had me going on, uh, because I, he, he said, yeah, you, you, you want to learn Linux. That's where you, you, you want to go. And so he had me learning that. And so I actually corrected questions on the test because I, they, they had a beta exam for the new Linux certification that was just coming out. And so I actually had more up-to-date information than the, than what was available on the exam. And so they had a comment on the exam places for putting comments. And so there was a couple of, uh, ones where I said, I selected this answer because it's probably what you expected. But in truth, as of Linux kernel 2.6.15 or whatever it was at the time, this is the correct answer. So that is my, that is my, my high school story, uh, with, with, um, uh, I, I guess not wasting time. I don't know what to call that. I don't, I don't know what to, what, what do we, what do we say that is, but that's my story. That's, that's, um, that's, that's how I got in a position where I was able to get a job straight out of high school and I didn't get paid. Well, I could have gotten paid well, but I didn't know that. I didn't realize just how I, because when I got to college and I started taking it classes in college, what I found out is that what I had learned just through that process in one year, basically put me at where the third year students were in, in college classes. So there was a bug in the software for registering classes because you're, there was supposed to be this prerequisite system and it was supposed to check the prerequisites. But at the time there was a bug in the prerequisite system. And so as a freshman, you could sign up for, um, what is this? So what is it? How does it junior is it junior senior it's freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Yeah. Junior level classes, uh, without the prerequisites because of this bug. And so I signed up for junior level classes I don't know if I did it in my freshman year or my sophomore year. I think it was towards the end of my freshman year. Anyway, and so I was able to go in those classes, some of those classes, and find out that basically I was ahead of the junior students because of what I'd done in high school. And again, but it was the same thing. It was the same stupid thing. It wasn't, and this is one of the things that frustrates me because it's, is it, well, was I really that special of a person? Or is it just that people were making really dumb choices? Uh, because in college, I found the same thing that because the college provided these great computers for the people that were in the IT programs, because I, I don't know that anybody in an IT program actually needs a great computer, or probably the crappier computer, the better, really, because that's what the actual people that they're going to be servicing in businesses and whatnot use. But they basically had gaming machines in the lab. And so they would just 
play games all the time rather than actually use that. I mean, why are you going to pay money to go to school? You pay money to go to school and then just slack off, right? What a wasted opportunity. Uh, cause the point of college is not just to slough through college. And I understand, you know, if, if your goal is to be a mechanic and you got to deal with high school and you don't have a technical program with a, with a mechanic class at your high school, which most don't, but in some areas they do. I, in both of the areas where I lived in Virginia and in Vermont, they had technical programs for things like that. So I was really lucky. And I think even here in Utah, where I live now, I think there's technical programs, uh, that they have a partnership with, uh, one of the colleges. I think the high school kids come and take mechanic classes at one of the local colleges, uh, if they, if they want to, and then there's that zone or whatever. But anyway, you know, why, why would you do that? Why would you, why would you go and, and, you know, you're, you're doing something. If you don't go to college, if you don't want to do something that requires a college degree, that's just silly. And if you do go to college, then deck on it, be one of the best so that you don't end up trying to figure out how to get a job. You're one of the ones that could just get it. But anyway, what I'm saying is I didn't make good money. I made basically just above minimum wage, but I couldn't be happier because I was able to use that time. I just said this part of the story earlier, but I'll, I'll repeat it since, uh, you know, we'll, we'll clip this in, but, um, so I autom I, I, I was an AV tech and I automated away my job. I got all the computer labs uh, so that they were in sync so that we would image 20 computers at a time in this lab, 20 computers alive in this at a time in this lab. And we're able to get everything up to date just within a matter of hours rather than a matter of days. And then I automated away. I found some, some, uh, software to do the booking system. So that instead of getting calls to cart TVs around, I could just have teachers register where they wanted to be. And then they could see who had the TV too. Right. Because then it was available to them on their computer. They could just open up their computer. And they, if they wanted the TV, they didn't even need me to go get that for them. They could just see which room it was in. And so the, the, I, I, be, I basically I just automated my away my job at that high school the first year after high school. And then that's when I yeah I started on my learning to program journey before college, which is what led into this whole start of the clip clip clip. OK, anyway, so, you know. Hopefully my, I don't know, whatever it is, arrogance or bad personality didn't piss you off too much. If so, consider a like, follow or sub. I'm actually working on something else, uh, but every once in a while I stop and go on a five minute story time or whatever. And uh, then this will, you know, get clipped out and yada, yada. Okay. So now, now I'm going to end that. Josh. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Adios, everybody that's watching the clip. Um, and then we'll continue on with what I'm actually here to do today, um, which is to, I don't know, I was doing something with this upload and I think we're pretty much done. I just need to check the file. So I, I think I want to say where I've got the uploading, I do want to show the file name. And so this should be rs.path, if I'm not mistaken. Um... And then what else we're going to do? So, oh, we got the speech ID back, but I don't care because I'm just going to read the speech IDs and then check. Oh, you know what? We should care though. And this is why, because the speech ID is probably what we want to rename the file to, or have it start with, or something like that. Once we need to somehow add the speech ID information into a file somewhere so that when we go to check, um, Hey, has this been uploaded? Yeah, it has a speech ID. So I'm not sure what to do with that yet, but I am sure that we're going to want to use the speech ID. So I'm just going to save that for later for now. So we'll say, uh, console.info, um, speech ID to do save this locally so we don't upload that file again um okay so and then 
Electrancy slash, well, I, I don't know why people have so many different usernames. I just have one everywhere, but I, so I don't know how to best call you, but I'm going to call you Electrancy because that's what you are right here. Uh, you automated the whole department in tech support. Was that, was that a college thing? Was that a high school thing? Did you go to college? A lot of people ask, do I need to go to college to become a programmer? And the answer is of course, no, uh, you don't need to go to college for probably most jobs, even of high paying jobs. If there's not a government regulation about it, you don't need to go to college for it. It's essentially the thing, but it definitely can help because of people you meet probably more than what you learn. And in some cases, the piece of paper is a requirement. If you're ADHD, then you should probably rethink your life because you're never going to get it. <laughs> or if you do, it's going to take you eight years and $120,000 and you're never going to recoup it. Um, okay, so we don't need to do that. All right, so this is great. This is in a good spot. It's working. I'm going to consider uh, logging into Otter AI here. Uh, and let's see. Um, delete me is ready. How do I, my agenda, my conversations. Um, all right, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Josh if he will delete those for me. Uh, or maybe we don't need to delete them. Maybe we just ignore them. Yeah, we'll, we'll just ignore it. We'll ignore it for right now and see what happens. See if we actually need to delete it. All right. So with this one, I think, okay, what, what do we need to do to call this complete? So I need to be able to use this. I need to be able to do two things. I need to be able to attach a speech ID to whatever is in latest. I need to make a latest. So right now we don't have a latest for our update here. So I probably need to also, let's say, hmm. All right, what's, what's the file path? File path is what? Where'd that come from? This is the other script that I've been working on. So we just got file path from somewhere. And then this one, I'm gonna call this latest.yaml. And let's go back up here and I'll call this latest path up here. All right. And then we'll call this latest path. And then what do I want to be able to do here? So in this upload, whoops, no, no, no. I got this one open over here. Okay. So we're going to get the speech ID is going to pop out. Okay. Um, so how am I going to use this? Let's think about how this is going to get used. So we're going to do extract audio. Um, and then after we extract the audio, we're going to do what with it? We're going to run uh, projects, root, ages, stream updater, what did I call it? Okay.
All right. So assuming all goes well there, then we can probably remove that file. But it would be nice if we change what we want the default name to be. So I think, what do I want to change the name to be? We might want to have a slug field. Let's see, we should have a latest. Let, let's see, what was my... I'm thinking across a couple of different things right now, so I'm sorry I'm not articulating what I'm doing because my my head's in three different places and I just kind of need to take a minute to explore before I come back to um, giving a good answer to what it is that I'm trying to do. Okay, these are named wrong because a problem that I've already fixed because false as a string and YAML, the false was appearing as a string. How do we get false to not be a string? YAML, Boolean, false. Do we have to do something special? Uh, valid YAML syntax. Is there a false? Okay. Yes, no, true, false. Maybe it's because the YAML parser I'm using expects it in some particular way or just doesn't expect it. Okay, fold new lines. Okay, I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this one first of all, because I think this is, what, part six now? So this should actually... Everything should be the same, except that I had a little bug. So the archive bit, it, it said is false. So if we, well, if we had looked at it just a moment ago, we could see that the archive flag was set as false in my little bespoke YAML file. Um, so it's not in here anymore. Archive. Uh, hmm. So here archive is set to true, but in the, in the one that I'm talking about it was set to false, but it still wasn't incrementing the number. So see these num numbers, they should increment. Oh, did I only put that up to five? I thought I put, I th thought I was putting that up to six. Oh crap, did I just break something? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Oops. Well, whatever that one was, it's gone. It's probably okay. Still figuring out my process here. Okay, so this, we actually wanted it to be up to here. And then I wanted to include everything. Wait, I moved that one. That's not what I meant to move. I meant to move this one. What the heck am I doing? I don't know what's going on here. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let me let me back out of that. The thing that I'm concerned about is simply a matter of I want to look at what this file is for this stream right now, the one that we're currently on. So we could go back to the title, for example. Let me go back to the title for you so you can see what the title looks like on the stream currently. All right, so that title is going to be in this file here. Yeah, and so I just want to make a copy of it and call it latest. Okay. All 
And then I think what I want to do is take the project name. Let's see. And there's a way. Let's see. I can cut out of the project name here. Ah, my belt. Um, one second. There we go. It starts to dig into my stomach. I need to loosen my button. Okay. So I think I want it to be the name of the project and then whatever the number was. We don't have the number in this one. So I need to rethink this. Okay, so where do we have archive in the up, up, uh, update? Hmm. I don't currently have that selected. Archive. Okay, so I, I'm not even setting the archive bit right now. Which is fine, I guess. I just need to remember that I'm not setting it right now. Okay, let me go back. So I want to have this latest here. I want to have... Hmm. I want to replace current session okay and, th and this is what I want to do too I want to do current session is what I want to put a number in here, which, what is that number? We have that number up above. The number that I want to use is session. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what the right mix of bash and not bash is going to be for this. But one of the important things is that I don't have a great way right now of associating because I, I don't know that I get to choose. I probably do get to choose what the name of the stream output is, but I don't have a nice way to name it what I want to name it as far as I know, because OBS is just going to re record it by its... Let's pull this over here. How is OBS going to record this? In the output recording, uh, generate file name without spaces. Okay. And do we have... I don't think we get to choose. I don't think we get to choose the name. I think we just get to choose the path. And so when I run this, hmm, it would be nice if we could rename it too. Ba basically, I, I want to automate this entirely. So, you know, it just runs on my computer. And anytime I'm, anytime I, a new recording shows up, it just, at some point, you know, say, say it runs every five minutes or say it runs uh, every night at 4 a.m. or whatever it is. But I want some sort of process by which I don't even have to do the drag and drop. It's just going to look at the folder, say, OK, which of these files isn't represented in um, Otter, doesn't have an Otter ID associated with it. Go ahead and upload those files. That's what I want to get to. 
so that this is just completely out of my hands. I don't worry about it. And then the next thing that I want to do that will make me as happy as a clam is if I could get it so that this is, this is the file that I edit for the streams right now. So it writes it out to OBS. I want it to write out to restream as well. And it would be awesome actually. I mean, eventually it'd be nice if it, if it created the scheduled stream, um, so that it could tweet it automatically. I think I could probably leave the tweet alone. Cause I think right now I'm getting double tweets. Let me, let me check and see what's going on. I'm going to click on my Twitter and look at my current Twitter history and see what I've got live now. Oh my goodness. I can look at me on Twitter and I'm scratching my head just like I was doing. Wow. That's amazing. I'm live on Twitter. Oh, I'm so gross. My grease monkey. Wow. Okay. Well, that's neat. That's its own thing though. That's just being live on Twitter. That's not the upload itself. That's kind of neat though. That's cool. People can pop in from Twitter. Sweet. Uh... Also, another documentation commit that I made just got merged in. I'm going to take two seconds or so to let myself be distracted by this. I want to show you this. So if you're not familiar with Caddy, you should be if you are a web developer, because Caddy is the the web server that you should be using rather than stuff that's old and decrepit and doesn't have the things that you need built in and requires tons of configuration, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I, uh, let me go, let me go back and see if I can show you the diff here. The diff is probably not as great as, yeah, you can't really tell the diff doesn't help. Anyway, this is one of the things that I do when I use something. So I had a stupid moment. Okay. <laughs> because, because I asked a question that was actually answered in the readme, but I did not see it because the way the readme was worded, it just, it was kind of a wall of text to me with links that were the lot that the, 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 the links were too long links. They add a blue color. So you want highlighting to be just on a few words, not on a whole sentence. If you, if you, highlight a whole sentence, then it makes the sentence more difficult to read and, and more difficult to gather important information. And so I just updated the documentation for this so that the steps are clearly laid out one, two, three, four, five, and that the appropriate links that you might need are highlighted in blue and that the, that there's examples for what you need for everything. Uh, just the stuff, some of the stuff was there before, but some of it wasn't. And now, now when I forget, and this is important for me too, right? Because I'm going to need to use this module for caddy again for, you don't need to use this to get started with caddy, but this is you, if you can, for let's encrypt, you can use these DNS modules and this one, the documentation was not sufficient for my needs for me to understand it quickly. Uh, but I'm going to go back and, and need this again. And so me doing this documentation update, it's not just, oh, great. I contributed to open source. Woo. Although that's cool too. Cause now I've contributed to a high profile project. Um, it says this model is deprecated, but it's actually kind of important because it's, it's got support for a hundred different DNS providers that the, the newer version of the module doesn't have yet. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So now when I go back to needing this documentation again, it's there in exactly the way that I need it to understand it. And I think that it's better for basically anybody that comes across it. So there's that. Anyway, that was just a little side note there. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked because I'm not actually sure what the right thing to do is right now. And because of that, I'm letting myself um, letting myself be sidetracked. So I need to go back to not being sidetracked plus equals. Uh, 
okay so let's let's get back to this so i wanted the latest because when i call my extract audio script the ideal thing would be able to would be to say okay whatever the latest is let's do a couple of things let's do we're, we're going to make this really fine-tuned to my specific setup it doesn't need to be generic it's just a script on my own system uh let's see what oh that delay though what delay are you talking about on twitter sorry i totally missed the comments you're in love with caddy that is good as you ought to be i was going to use haproxy but no caching or auto renewal of TLS certs. Yeah, Haproxy has some things that it's good for, but essentially the cases that I needed for Haproxy, I ended up writing custom Go code myself. Um, and Matt, the caddy guy, has another project called, um, I don't know what it's called. Some sort of layer five networking thing. Uh, but it, for the cases that I need for her proxy, uh, his tool or the tool that I wrote myself are better for that use case because her proxy gives you a lot of power in configuration. For example, you can do SSH HTTPS multiplexing with her proxy, but it's kind of rough. Uh, it's difficult to find the documentation for it and understand it. And it's difficult to read it once it's there and then you just can't handle edge cases and whatnot. Uh, write out your options in English. That always helps me. I'm assuming you're saying for me trying to get back on task uh, is if I you know, write out the things that I need to be doing just in plain English, then that'll help. I believe that you are right. I do not disagree. Um, okay, so th this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grep for project here. Hmm. AJ stream updater, latest.yaml. Oh, this needs to go up one level. There we go. All right, project sharpen, and then cut dash C, what is it? Six, seven, eight, nine? Hmm, that did not work. Um, One. Oh, it's nine dash. There we go. Uh, so I guess it's 10 dash. Okay. So this is what I need is I'm going to get the project name. And actually I'd kind of like to, was it grep dash? It's not dash Q that I want. What is it to tell grep to stop after the first match? Yeah. What? Oh, there we go. I'm going to copy this. I do want my extract audio to be generic. I think I'm going to make another command that is upload audio. And I'm going to, maybe that's what I'll do right now. I'll actually just go ahead and say, uh, bin extract audio, bin uh, transcribe audio, I think is what I want to call it. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to leave my extract audio as it is. Um, it's in a good place. And then I'm going to update my transcribe audio. And this one is going to have uh, some more specific stuff. And then let's see, maybe I should have, some debug. Maybe I should put, maybe I should put that, um, progress print out to standard error rather than standard out. Hmm, not sure about that. I don't want to think about that. That's too nitty gritty of a detail right now. But what I do want to think about is this is going to be my name equals 
and then we're going to end it like that. So I'm going to go with my audio. Hmm. I'm going to get rid of my video base name because I don't know how to rename the videos yet. Or maybe, maybe we'll do this. So maybe I'm going to bring this up. Yeah, I'm going to bring this up. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the name from latest.yaml and we're going to get the session from latest.yaml as well. And that's going to be current session. Okay. And then this should actually have a pipe fail to it, but I don't know that I want to deal with that right now. Uh, oh, hey, everybody. How's it going? AJ O'Neill is me. Who are you? What brings you to the stream tonight? I am making markedly good progress, all, all told, on getting this Mojanker to a point where when I hit my in stream button, ooh, I bet I could get the stream deck to run a script when I end the stream too, huh? Hmm. Yeah. We're going to get this whole thing automated. Webhook? We do a webhook on the stream deck? Hmm. Well, I, right now, I think I want to get there. I think I want to get there because I think this whole thing would be valuable to other streamers. I'm not really in the streamer community. Uh, I'm an oddball um, in that sense. I mean, I guess I am in the streamer community. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe that's not a really appropriate thing to say because obviously you're here. So, and I'm here. But what I mean is I'm no big dog and I don't really get what everybody else does. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. AJ, the A is for awesome. The J is for just doing my thing. So I'm just doing my thing. Awesome Lee, as it were. Um, but I don't know how everybody else does stuff, but I think that this would be uh, other people that want to be programmer streamers. I, I think that what I'm building up towards could be something that's packaged in a Mac app that I could charge on the app store for. And, you know, 10 bucks, people would love to pay for it, to have it, and just have this thing where you it sets up your OBS titles, puts it out on Restream or whatever, you know, just have a package that just helps you. I mean, goodness knows if the thing existed, I'd, I'd buy it if I knew about it. Um, but anyway, so we're, we're going to get the current session from here. So we're going to have the name and the session. And we're going to rename the video file is what we're going to do. So my video base name. Um, and, you know, I'm going to add MKV in here, too. I don't do I don't think I'm doing MKV right now, but I might as well. I might switch over to it. Let me go update that in the other file real quick, too. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So one of those ought to match. Uh, and then... Let's just go ahead and rename the video. So I guess I, I should have my video dir name. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get this working for us. Okay, dir name. So then what if we just rename this right here now? So we're gonna MV um my video. to my video base name, except, hmm, here's the problem. How do we know what the last three digits of this thing were? I guess we could, can I, how do I, how do I get the last, how do I cut in reverse? Mm, let's say, can I cut in reverse? Man. Man cut, reverse. All right, can I do echo, hello, pipe, cut, dash, C, 
negative five. Hmm. Uh, and that's everything up to four. That's not what I want. Okay, there's probably a reverse command in. Wait, can we reverse a string in Bash? Reverse a string in Bash. Bash may not be the place for this, but let's let's see what we can do. Oh, I don't want to run the loop on this. No, no, no. I was just thinking maybe there's a quick command to do it. But the, the, the right place for this stuff might be in JavaScript or Go. But I'm just, I'm gonna, gonna figure this out for a second. Okay. How can I determine, is there an ext name? Is there, let's see, man, base name, ext, suffix. Uh, base name, suffix, suffix, if it is a, an existing suffix, it's a string. Okay. Bash git file extension. Let's see what we can do here. I guess I would just Yeah, I don't like doing this kind of stuff. And if I have to, then maybe I will. But I actually don't want to do too much crazy bash foo. I'm looking for maybe a command that will give it to me. Um let's look it's not really what I want to do. I'm a little confused about this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's really what I want to do. Base name. Oh, yeah. You know what? I can't believe how silly I've been. Yeah, I totally should be using dash dash on this as far as making this um, something that is generally useful. Yeah, this should have dash 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 dash. 100% on board with that. All right. What's the most obvious way to do this? Sad, really? This is this is a thing. We need better tools. This is one thing that, uh, and I want to talk with Ryan about this. Ryan, if you're watching, mark this point. I think I think you've actually seen a stream where I've said this before, but we need better tools for file systems. There needs to be an ext name command. That's something that I I don't know how in the world the dash incubator could fund something like that, but we need cross-platform core utils that are better. There are certain things that are just so commonly needed and should be available in scripting um, that are not, but having an ext name, having a, um, okay, I'm just gonna go with this method for now, but having, a, being able to do byte counts cross-platform, there is, there is a, a stat command that is available uh, on most platforms, but the stat command behaves differently and returns different types of byte counts and is file system dependent. Uh, it'll typically return block sizes. So there's just a lot of things where we ought to have a, a, just a better way to go about this. Okay, so my video ext name is going to be, this makes me uncomfortable. Um, my video just i don't i don't like doing bash foo it's not obvious you, you, you just yeah i don't like bash foo and maybe i should do my dir name my ext name let's do that 
All right, and so then here, all we're gonna need is my ext name, I think. I need to go read that again. Does it include it or not? Um, ugh, awk. Uh, cry, 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 cry. My ext. Okay, so I, I think I think this is correct. Let's see if we can try this out. So let's do my foo equals file name dot ext. Let's say path. Oops, I guess I need to do this in bash. Give me just a second. I'm gonna move this over. All right, so now I've got my foo. And then I need to do basically echo and then instead of my video, I'll change that to my foo here. And that's only the ext. So I still would need the dot in there, which is what I've got here. So that's good. Then I can get rid of these. Okay. Yeah. So it should just be that then. So now we want to move my video to my dir name slash my video base name and then dot ext. Okay, there we go. And then I think the way that I want to do this, I'm trying to think, do I want to put the project name in front? Or the project name behind. I think I want to put the project name behind. So I think I'm going to do my name hyphen my session. Okay. So my new video is going to be this one. I'm going to call this my video and my old video. All right, so we're going to move my old video to my video. That's what we're going to do. But with all the money out there and all the different companies that there are, you know, it's just amazing to me that we don't have, just think of all the billions of dollars that go into tech. And really, we just need 10 people that are just part of a not insane assortium, which good luck finding some way to put that together that just work pretty much full time. And I don't even know if we need 10, maybe three or four, but just people that are working essentially in Go and in Rust to build system tools that should just be available on all platforms. We just need an easy way to do that. Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I'm AJ O'Neill. I'd love to know who you are, where you're from, and what brings you here today. Um, I did just recently give a recap of this project, but basically I'm working on I'm working on a bash script. I was working on I'm, I'm primarily I've been working on the the node script to do the upload. I got that done. It's working. And now I'm working on the bash script to handle some of the finer details. So that basically I want it that when I click the stop stream button, that the, it's going to run a script that's going to find the latest video file that's going to pull, extract the audio, upload it to Otter, and have it prepped for my digital assistant when the stream ends. That's, that's basically what I want to do. And then yesterday was the part that happens next is because he's going to take the YouTube URL, put it as part of the stream title, and the other script that I wrote yesterday, if you watch that stream, is the one where... Uh, it's the start of the process of, okay, we're going to be able to download that and we're going to be able to basically create the content and blog pages. So I'm, uh, I'm just automating part of my stream process so that uh, it's easier to find interesting information that happens during the stream, the little stories and the one-offs and the Q and a, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, just my own self trying to look at things. So my name, my session, what is it upset about this for? 
It doesn't like that I'm using cat. But I don't understand this. If somebody understands why shell check doesn't want me to use cat for this, then please let me know. Is it because I guess, oh, in this case, uh, duh, I'm just so used to doing it this way, but of course I, I could, of course I could do this way instead. I'm just used to catting a file and then doing whatever the thing is and have that, that, the, the pipeline be in place. But no, I totally get what it's saying here. No, I do not need cat for that. I can directly grep. Shell check is correct. Um, but this given me that a warning like that a couple of times where I didn't know what to do. Okay, and this one is not going to be 10. So this is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So start on the 10th character. This one's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So start on the 19th character. All right. So let's just do a cold run on this. Let's see how this is working. I'm just going to do an exit one after it. So let's do transcribe audio. And I'm going to do a little drag and drop from yesterday's stream. Okay, my video base name, unbound, unbound variable my video base name because this should be my my old video i guess is what i'm going to call it for now i don't know whatever and this is going to be my video base name all right let's try again okay so uh It's going to have this all the way to there. Oh, interesting. That's wrong. Let's see. Did it get this one right? Got that one right all the way. But this, it's got the sharpen, and then it's got this. So this, uh, I, did I count wrong? Because this is basically saying, let me go latest here. Sorry. Let me look at my latest file. So this current session oh right because this one has two at the beginning i wasn't thinking about that it's got so this this is very very you know if i change anything in my process i'm gonna have to change a bunch of things in my process but it's okay let me check we got any comments here hello hello welcome um All right, so I'm going to go. Yeah, I am off by two, so 21. All right, let's see this again. All right, so now we've got this transcription going. All right. Maybe, hmm. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to swap. I think it's easier readability if we swap. And I think I'm going to leave a space in the file name. That's not something I usually do, but in this particular case, because of the way the titles are going to look when I upload it to Otter, well, I guess it doesn't matter. But I am, I am going to swap this bit here. I think I am just going to have it be in front because I think that's going to be easier for me to read. And I might just do it that way, actually. Okay. All right. So that's what my video is going to be. So I'm going to move my video. And then... My audio name is going to be, I guess it's the same as my video base name. 
This is really an old video base name. So let me see, how do I want this to be? Eh, let's, let's say, let's call it this. Let's say that this is my video. All right. So we're going to make this my media or my prefix. And then I'm going to have my audio is going to be M4A. Okay. Great. So now my audio is just getting the prefix treatment. And I kind of want this to be like, so like that. Y'all have a good day now you're here. And if you don't, don't you go but ruin nobody else's. That's Tabitha Brown, for those of you that don't know. You probably don't follow her because you're probably not into cooking channels because you're into programming channels. But my wife is into cooking channels. And Tabitha Brown is awesome. In fact, I think I'm going to pick her tomorrow on JavaScript Jabber. I should, I don't know why I don't tell more people tune into JavaScript Jabber. I'm pretty sure there's a link down in the doobly-doo, but if not, just, you know, Google JavaScript Jabber. Want we'll to learn about JavaScript. Hey, Kerglo, what is up? Long time no see. I'm atrocious at bash. I would have probably had to write an Node.js script for this. So this is the thing. You would do well to write a Node.js script for this. And somebody was bringing up the other day, they've got this in the content request channel for me to do a review on this. I think it's called XV, uh, XV script. It's basically, it's a combination of node and bash or is it XZ script, XV GitHub. Um, is it, it's a Google thing. Maybe XZ. ZX, ZX. Yeah, this thing right here. So this gives you kind of a little bit of the best of both worlds, as it were. Uh, the main thing is, so this, it, this is a little tricksy. It's just defining a function. So what it does is it just preloads a module that does a require for this function. And it doesn't make it a global, but it preloads it before this script runs. It's a little bit of Node.js internal machinery trickery, but this is just a function. And if you run any, if you call any function, you can call a function either with parentheses or you can call a function with ticks. And if you call a function with ticks, then what it will do is it will parse the string and then it will pass that into the function as two parameters, the string parts and the template parts. Yeah. So a few people brought this up. And they, they want me to kind of talk about it a little bit. So I think I will later, not in this stream, but anyway, I don't recommend using, uh, bash, uh, for all things, but the, for, I already had part of this in bash and, you know, honestly, it'd probably be easier to use ZX cause then I could do the string stuff that I'm trying to do instead of having to pipe it through grep and whatnot. Um, but I like my bash scripts to, I don't know, ZX, it feels kind of in a weird space for me. Uh, it's, um, it's a little bit uncanny valley. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I just, because scripts, I don't know, they just feel that they should not be dependent on other platform stuff. I don't know. I, I don't have a really good defensible position for it, but just something about it doesn't quite feel right is what I, what I'll have to say. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, all right. Video. So maybe I just do my old video.
And maybe we just get rid of this. Like that, there we go. Here's my video. So we're gonna rename the video file. And then we're gonna have the audio file. We're gonna extract the audio from the video file. And then I want to upload the audio file. And then I want to remove the, that file. And then I'm gonna say, uploaded um, my video um, to Otter for transcription. So that's basically it. So the two pieces that are missing now for this to be 100% what I want it to be is can I get it so that when I hit stop in Stream Deck that it runs this and can we get the most recent file from my stream folder to be the input. So my latest video what would this be? My latest video, if we use ls dash t r on, what is my source here? So we want head dash n one. So that's my latest video. So here we go. That's the one I'm recording right now, right? This would be 21, 42. Gosh, I'm not good with military math right now. Nine, did I start recording this around nine? Have we been going almost three hours? Yeah, we have. Well, look at that. To me, scripts are programs and should be as readable and maintainable as all other programs. So I agree with you, um, or at least I don't disagree with you. But then you should be writing your script in Go or in Node. Bash is for things that are pretty teeny tiny one-offs. Use find. All right, sure. All right, I, 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 I'll, 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 I'll deal with you. Shell check. So I'm gonna if I'm if it wants me to use find. Nah, I don't really want to use find because it's gonna. Let's see, let's see a find. Yeah, let's see if I can do this. Can we? This might work. Can we find a file in there that was modified within the last five minutes? That should also work too, right? Mm, nah, we're going to go with just the latest. What is that T by anyway? Man, LS. What time does dash T go by? Dash T. Sort by time modified. Okay. So we could, we could do that with find maybe. Man, find uh, modified. Mod time. I don't know. I don't. I don't really want to use. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm. I'm going to ignore your advice there, my good friend's shell check for this particular thing. I need to go find the shell check exceptions, so I can add this exception. No. Nope. Um. Shell check enumerated shell check codes. There we go. That's what I need. Oops. Ah. Just, I don't think that I, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Uh, shell check disable equals.
All right, my latest video appears unused. So my old video is potentially going to be my latest video. Yeah, there we go. That'll be interesting enough to try. Okay, this is, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a bin transcribe latest. Just because I, I wanna be able to test that on its own without having to worry about accidentally um, setting this. So transcribe audio. And then we're going to put in my latest video. Right? Oh, or... Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Stream deck run bash. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. With user profile, my my concern might be that Stream Deck might try to run non-interactive mode, because that would make sense. Oh, what's this person got? Oh, cool, cool. I just want to see configure stream deck. Do we have a thing for script here? Script, hmm. command, hmm. Stream deck, switch profile, multi-action. Uh, system, open. Can I have this open something? Hmm. Does anybody know how to do that? If you do, let me know. I'm beginning work on a project. Just set up Rust backend. Awesome. Glad to hear that. May you rust on. Okay, I'm getting a little bit distracted here. I do want to have that in but I'm not quite to the part where I'm really ready for it. Um, let's see. Oops. My old video equals, let's do this. Okay. Maybe I do this first, actually. Renaming like two. Oops. Prefix. Right? No. Yeah. Wait. My audio is the same as my prefix. Got it. That's why I did it that way.
Okay. So we're just going to echo renaming this. Cool, this is good. So let's see if we can do this with my with my stream from last night. I think we're at the point where we can get that done. If we get that done, then I might call that my win for the day. I'll get commit the other piece. I think I think I can just call that the win. And I'm not going to worry about the stream deck button because that's such a small thing. I mean, how much more trouble is it for me to type, say, TRL? Maybe that's what I'll make the command. Just make an alias that's TRL versus having to reach over here and find the button and press it. Literally, it would be quicker. Transcribe latest, TRL. That's what I think I'll do. And that will be, you know, because, well, but... But then I have to go back to the keyboard after pressing the button to stop the stream. And I have to wait for the stream to finish. It's got about 30 seconds afterwards. So I could put a sleep in TRL. I could do that. So transcribe latest. What we could do is we could put a sleep echo waiting to transcribe my latest video. And we could put a sleep in there for basically 60 seconds. And then we could say transcribe audio. That way I hit the button, I hit TRL, I walk away. I'm done for the night. Okay, I'm thinking of using REST to call Node.js to do server-side rendering. Um, well, why not go the other way? Why not uh, write Rust in WASM to be called from Node.js? Because that seems to be more the way of things. So you can write Node modules basically three different ways with Rust. You can write them as WASM which might give you, that might be too limited for what you want to do. Or you can use the, what is it called? Nappy, the node API, or you can use the old one that they had before that. Okay. I'm going to take these glasses off. I don't know where I've been wearing the glasses today. It actually just kind of fatigues my eyes to have things so up close and have glasses on. Okay. So we're ready for pretty much the, the test of the night. Um, All right, let's see if it works. Um, I'm going to run transcribe audio on yesterday's video, last night's video, 12, 18 AM. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Oh, what? Mm, rookie mistake of some sort, but I'm not sure of what sort. My audio. Oh, we don't want directory name in there. Oh, yeah, we do. Sure. All right, yeah. I'll just put it over there in... My audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine, actually. That's all good. Might as well. Put the audio side by side. All right. Let's try it again. Hmm. 
Okay. My video. I want to be my old video. All right, there it goes. So, you know, and I, actually I should have put this in downloads because, well, no, the audio file can only get so big. I mean, what's it going to be? 200 megabytes. It's the, the holdup speed. I don't know exactly why it takes so long. Why isn't this going a thousand X? Because all it's got to do is just read through the file and then write. So maybe... Uh, oh, it's done. Uploading rs.path. So I need to fix that. All right, this is going to take a minute. So while that's taking a minute, I'm going to exit over here. And I'm going to fix that rs.path bit where I'm doing this. I'm trying to get in the habit of always using template strings because there's just not really much sense in using any other type of string. Template strings are always the string that you should use. All right, there it goes. About every five megabytes or so. It's printing out. How big is this file? It is 184 megabytes. So... We should see this upload in soon. Upload, rename. It was renamed to sharpen six, which is actually not correct. That one is sharpen five because tonight's stream is sharpen six. So I just renamed it over here, but, and I'm going to rename it in Otter as well. Cause it was uploaded to Otter, Otter as sharpen six because, because it was. So let me go refresh this. Okay, uh, I want my server to be Tokyo based and Tokyo doesn't run in WASM. Okay, but why? What are you, are you just, just cause you want to play around in Rust? Cause I'd say pick the one that you're trying to go all in on. Why, why would you need to call node from Rust? What was the, what was the purpose of needing to do that? Server side rendering. Um, this is the way that I would do it. Okay. If you, I mean, I just think nodes kind of, so what is Rust doing that node doesn't do well? I both do both server and client side rendering. Uh, but what is, what is it? So what, what I would say is this, basically make, make an HTTP call out to node to get the HTML, just to have node set up to do its server side render file server thing, and then just make the HTTP call out to it and, you know, figure out if you want to implement caching or how, how it is you want to do it. Okay, so this has the dot M4A at the end. I don't really want the M4A at the end, do I? I guess I don't care. Yeah, we'll leave it. Hmm. But why is that being left there? Hey, anyway, great success. That worked, which means... Time for the victory spin. Let me just take one more look here in the upload and see, was there anything else? 
that I wanted to do. Particularly, I wanted to see where that name for the file was being used. And I think I'm going to call it an early night tonight. I don't think I'm going to continue on with the dash stuff tonight. Um, just, you know, with getting the digital assistant and kind of thinking about how to get more gains. Oh, I didn't finish my focus. Sad. There's still a little bit of focus left over, but um, I'm going to go to bed early tonight. Going to get a good night rest. Uh, I feel like this was really good. Um, this is almost perfect. Mm, is there anything else that I want to do before I sign off on this? I think I'm going to take uh, two things. I want to see if I can get it to upload without the .m4a um, in the file name. Upload. Speech, was it? Upload speech. Did I not type upload before? Was I typing load wrong? Load. Oh, I just, whatever. Upload speech. So I'm not doing anything. What's going wrong is going wrong under the hood in this thing, which at some point I do want to redo. I, I, I want to copy his code and just simplify it a bit. Um, especially getting rid of all these extra dependencies that just have no sense in being there. But I do want to see if there's a simple way upload upload speech file I think this is the only place where it gets the read stream so I think it's reading form data file mm. I think I think we're just going to have that dot m4a in the file name and it's going to be okay My guess, there must be another call that happens to rename the file after it's uploaded. Because I'd think the way that they would do this in the browser, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how they do it, but he's copying this from the way the browser behaves. And I think the way that they would do this in the browser, oh wait, key, params, key, what are you getting here, key, finish speech upload. Where are we getting this from? XML response. Okay, finish speech upload. But they don't give us an ability to choose. What in the letter L is this garbage? Zero comma. What is going on? So this is an expression. What is he, what is he doing? What is he doing? I think he's using this zero comma. I don't know who this person is or what they're doing because the code that he's gotten here is just all over the place in terms of this is too clever. Most people wouldn't. I, I'm the zero comma here. I don't I don't know exactly what it's doing, but it, it's an expression that causes both the thing on the left and the thing on the right to evaluate. I think he's doing it. Because maybe what he meant to do was to do this, is my, my guess. But that wasn't... But he did this instead because... I, th I think it's trying to get it to a weight on... I don't know. No, oh, you know what this is from? Okay, no, it's not. it's not what I thought it was. This is actually from the transpiler, the transpiler's putting that in there. But I don't quite understand why the transpiler's putting that in there. Probably so that it doesn't get minified away. 
because my guess is that some minifiers incorrectly would minify away parenthesis. I don't know. I actually, I actually, I really just don't know. I'm going to shut up now. Okay. But that's not the point of why I was coming here. I was coming here to see if I could figure out hmm, what the, what the name is the way that it is. Nope. All right. I don't need to worry about it. So this is looking really good. The only thing that I might change is have the megabytes print out instead of printing out the standard uh, out, have them print out the standard error as they're counting. So I think this would be better off with debug. I don't know in node if dot debug goes to standard out or standard error. It seems that it should go to standard error. Let me see about this console dot debug node.js. And let me go check here. Um, what's the problem with M M4A? Oh, thank you. Thank you that my bash is pretty readable. I, I, I mean, I guess that's, I always think ne bash never looks readable, but I'm, I'm glad that you find it to be, uh, good enough. Um, yeah, but the question is, why is the zero there? That's it's it's there for some niche reason, and I I vaguely I've got this itch of a remembrance of why you would do that. It's one of those things like putting a double bang in front of a function name. Um, it's just there's just some weird things where you can do something that will trigger uh, certain behavior. Um, that's, that's often kind of really, you just, I don't know why a transpiler would output code that way. A anyway, a comma B just returns B the, the result of the B expression. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was thinking that's the way that it would work, but the question is why is it doing zero comma? Why would the transpiler decide to do that? What's the, and, and I bet it's just one of those those edge cases of if something has a weird name or, or it, maybe it's to detach the thisness because if you create the, ah, I bet that's what it is. I bet that's what it is. I bet it's the transpiler is using it as a minified way of getting rid of thisness so that you're guaranteed that default is de thisified from Axios. I think that's it. What are your thoughts? Okay, let's see. Hmm, a lot of stuff's been added. All right, debug. Oh, alias for console.log. So no. Mm. Print long progress to standard error. Do I want to do that though? No, I don't. Yeah, I really don't. We're just going to leave it as info. Okay, let me give this a once over here. Make sure that I've got everything that I want the way that I want it, more or less. Pretty simple. Everything's said and done. I don't, I'm not doing anything with speech ID. That's something that I wish I wish I was. Kind of want to put that into the file name, to be honest. That's the, that's the one thing I might want to do that I'm not doing is put the speech ID into the file name. And for that, I'd need to T the output. I, 
I often forget what how does t work. We can do t. Uh, I just man t. Man t. Append file. Okay. So we can t this to. Doing that right to temp dot log I think might want to put the otter ID in here and then have that run again. So if I could tee that to temp.log, then hmm. then I could grab speech ID so my otter equals and we could do grep temp.log put this all at the end Cut. And then I guess it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it would start on the twelfth. So that would be my otter ID. And that's how I could know that it's been uploaded to Otter, I suppose. So my video. Be renamed to that. All right, let me give that one a shot. Let's just see how it goes. I'm just gonna, I'm actually going to change my latest here so that it does say five for now. We'll just get rid of this here. That's when it's done. And we'll get rid of this here because that's when it's done. It's no longer useful. All right. I think this ought to be it. All right, so we're going to run this one again. And again, actually, let me get rid of that. I'm going to go back to what I was doing before with the audio, where I'm not going to do the audio this way. I'm going to put it in home downloads because that disk is faster. And so I think it might 
if it's reading from one disk and writing to another disk, I think it might be just a little bit faster. So let's try this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, eh, it started out a, little, a touch faster. No, okay, it's maintaining, it's maintaining uh, about a 30% improvement. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it's going about twice as fast now, and it's increasing in speed. Yep, okay. Definitely better to have them on two different disks. Oh, interesting. .m4a, .m4a. That's why the M4A was there. So I did something wrong where I, I put the file extension on the name of the file twice. So I'll fix that. Hey, uh, uh, Electrancy, have a good night. Cool AJ. It does do this if I, okay. Thanks for confirming. And I'm actually gonna go into Otter and just cancel that right away if I can. It's, I guess it doesn't matter. It's already gonna be eaten, up, eaten away at my minutes. But it's, it's okay. We got to get as real as we can for these things, you know? Let's go ahead and just delete this one. All right. So the only thing that went wrong here... Oh, that's beautiful. This is beautiful. Um... except now it actually does have the wrong ID in it. Let me see if I can go back. Do I still have in my history the original upload? I think I might. Okay, I think this was the original upload of that file. Yeah, so I'm gonna put that in here. So now I've got the Otter ID. The system's coming together. I'll figure out how I'm gonna, how I need to use that later. But this is great. We're really, really close. Okay. So where did I get my ext name on here twice? My prefix, my video. Um, my prefix. Hmm. Oh, that one just says. No. That actually does have. My ext name is in there twice somehow. So that's my video. Hmm. EXT name. All right. Can somebody can somebody see what's going wrong here? So how did this happen? Where was it? Um, uploaded. Where did it? Where did I just see it? Uploading. Okay. Let's go check where's where does it say uploading? Uploading rs.path. So that is what it's what it's named at that moment. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm AJ. Hopefully signing off in a few minutes here. Just wrapping up some of the finer details on this uh, otter upload script. And if you're interested in it, let me know. Uh, I'm going to give you a channel link again. So anybody who's not already in the Discord, if you want to join. 
maybe the M4A gets produced by FFmpeg. Mm, FFmpeg is looking for what I'm telling it to do. But the good news is create read stream. This is the file name that's being passed in as process.argv2. So we are narrowing it down a little bit. Oh, this is the uh, the audio file. My audio.m4a. That's the problem right there. That's where it's getting the double m4a. Okay. So that solves that problem. And this should say uploaded my audio, not my video. And then, so this, my video is never used. So we just have my audio prefix there. Which at this point, it almost feels like this is an abstraction too many that that will do. Let's change this to be called my, my title, I think is the right thing to call this. Okay, I think that solves my issue. And I'm going to go ahead and put this up on a gist for safekeeping. Or no, I'll just put this in an issue for the project, duh, that's where this belongs. Trying to get away from using gists as a crutch because you really, you know, either put it in your blog and if you don't have a blog, then check out um, bliss.js.org. If you want to get a blog nice and quick, there's a template there that I created. This will get you a blog up and running in about 30 seconds hosted off of GitHub pages. A little longer than 30 seconds, because the 30 seconds is the processing time, plus you have to add another 30 seconds of click time. So 60 seconds, 90 seconds, you can have your blog up and running with a nice template that looks good. Uh, it'll actually fetch all of your information about your blog from GitHub, because when you clone the template, it runs a GitHub action that uses the token that is from your account, from your GitHub action, not something that I see, but from your GitHub action to template the blog details and then goes and publishes it. And then you can use bliss.js.org to be able to create your blogs, uh, your articles really easy and um, just copy them over to GitHub. Anyway, I AJ stream updater, this is still private. So transcode audio.sh just to put this there for safekeeping so my computer isn't the only place that it exists um, all right so this uh, feature upload audio files Boop. And then what are the changes that I made here? Hopefully all good things. Oh, and I need to update latest to be back to six so that when I finish the stream, it's got that. Um, Get commit dash M beat. Uh, this is going to be um, 
titles. Whoa. And this is going to be add current session number. That's essentially what this does. And latest.yaml. Good. Okay. And then what was the last thing was checking to see if we can get OBS, if we can get a button in OBS to do something interesting. So uh, not OBS, so stream deck. Stream deck open bash script. All right, open action. So it's going to be an open action. So let's see what we can do here. Um, I want to check if I can do, we're, we're going to create a, a greet then bash say hello. Do we still have the say program? Hello. Can we get a better voice here? Oh, it's not output device. Hello. Oh, that is Alex. Is it Alexa? No. Siri? I don't remember what the, the names are. Voice. Can I see a list of voices? Oh, okay, cool. Say dash V question mark. What? Holy moly. Check out all these cool voices. Alice. No. Alva, Emily. Daniel. Nice. Fiona. Nice. Let's try Fiona. Hello. <laughs> All right. Cool. Oh, I got to try Rishi now. Hello. All right, cool. We're going to go with Fiona here. So what I'm trying to test is what what's the depth of what this can do. Chmod A plus X bin greet. Hello, all why all? Hmm. Hello, all you watchers. Okay, so now I just want to see if I can get Stream Deck to, can we do open and then can we do greet? All right, so it can't find it. So can we do this then? Can we do, can we do bin greet? No, we can't. Um, all right, can we do bash bin greet? Didn't work. Kind of sort of worked. Can we do bash? users AJ greet um yes hello all you watchers cool 
So let's try this one more time and see. Hello, all you watchers. All right. That worked. So now I guess the trick is to see can it so it, it's opening it in iterm. So this is good news because this means that it should run it's running in an interactive session. All right, so we just need which transcribe, or not which, sorry, command dash V transcribe latest. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. So can I get to run bash greet? Let's see if this works. No, that doesn't work. So I've got to give it a file name. But as long as I give it a file, a full file path. So. Oops, not transcribe, greet, just greet again. Hello, all you watchers. That's good. Uh, what do you want to build with it? With Otter or with Stream Deck? That, so the, the big thing that I'm building is I'm making it so that when I end the stream, the file, so the audit, so here's the video file of this stream presently. I want it so that when I end the stream, this is kind of funny because the accumulation of the stream, the stream ending is going to be, imp the stream was implementing me being able to press this button that when, sorry, I'm babbling on without saying the actual thing. Uploads the audio from the stream to Otter, which is a transcription service. So where did it go? Otter's right here. So this is last night's stream. Well, hello, hello, welcome back. Let's see how everything's working today. It looks like it's worked. The video files that are being recorded while I'm streaming. One of the things that I want to do is put together basically a blog, a content. And then there's going to be Otterception because it's going to be transcribing the things that it was transcribing. But I'm going to actually have this on a content page. So there's going to be uh, a, a page where each one of these things becomes a link and this, all of this is me. It should know that already. Kind of surprised that it doesn't. Maybe it's still transcribing. Maybe it hasn't reached the end yet. Anyway, um, all of these time codes are going to be linked to the place in the video where it is. So it, it's just going to make it easier for my Josh, my new digital assistant and I to better manage the interesting bits of what goes on on the live streams and pull them out into clips and to be able to reference them and search for certain keywords. Oh, what was the stream when I talked about this, that sort of thing. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. So. The last thing I need to do then is go back to, whoa, there we are. We're going to add a wait. So where's the delay? We're going to add a delay here and the delay is going to be 30. Um, yeah, wait 30 more seconds. So this is going to be not one, but 30. And then we're going to add an open. And then the open is going to be bash and then transcribe latest. 
And then I guess we call this upload and transcribe stream audio. I didn't quite get that right, but I'm excited. This is great. Okay. Well, I just need to make sure that transcribe latest is going to do the right thing here. I don't need this anymore because the weight is going to be built into the stream deck. So let's just make sure this thing is doing the right thing. Transcribe latest. Not quite the right thing, so I'm glad that we tested that. So my OBS sources, dir, and we're going to take this, and we're going to do my OBS sources, dir, and then we're going to put it up here. And then we're going to say my OBS sources dir slash my latest video. I'm excited about this, y'all. So when I sign off, we'll know next time I... Get, well, I'll find out in the morning if this worked because I'm 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 going to sign off. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to walk out. And I'm not going to fidget with this. It's done. Oh yeah. So when the stream gets long, like three and a half hours, and uh, the YouTube seems to add more delay, so maybe an additional five seconds of delay every hour. Well, it's because it's going through restream as well. I need to, I need one, one of the things eventually maybe one day I'll do is instead of using restream, have, uh, things update locally, or maybe, maybe I'll switch to stream labs instead of using OBS. As long as I don't have to go reset everything up again, that would be terrible. But I could also use FFmpeg. I have good enough upload speed that I can upload to two services at once. I would just need to, you, you need to set up pipes through FFmpeg so that OBS records to FFmpeg and then that FFmpeg needs to um, basically record to two other FFmpegs. But then you, you got to manage the starting that and stopping it, which is what Streamlabs OBS does, if I understand correctly, is they just embed an FFmpeg within it and that allows it to upload to multiples or may maybe they have actually modified the source code. I don't know. Anyway. Um, oh, I forgot to move. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you so much, Kirglo. I appreciate that. Um, I forgot to remove the last M4A. I did indeed. Thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm so. I'm always so glad when people have their their eyes open and they catch my little oopsies. Let me go fix that over here too for the for the time being. Boop. All right, and then. All right. So good. What a good night. This deserves a thumbs up, y'all. Even if you don't know how great this ends up, th th this is, it just, just smash it. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, okay. All right. Any last things that I need to do? 
transcribe latest echo transcribe audio. So that looks right. So we can just get rid of the echo. Uh, one thing that I would like to do, to do, don't upload if it isn't at least 10 seconds old. I don't, I don't know how long it updates. I'm imagining the last modified is being updated every second. All right, so with all of that, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Let me press, does the greet button still work? Hello, all you watchers. Huh, the greet button still works. Great. This is good. That's good. I think everything's good. Uh, let me close out of some tabs here. Because I don't want a bajillion tabs open when I come to my computer tomorrow morning. Okay. We got our open there. Wit AI. I am interested to watch this. I don't know if this is still going or not. Apparently Facebook bought these guys and they do, they're like Otter, but it's different. I don't know if it's, I think it's also meant only for short snippets. I don't think it's meant for hours long. I think it's meant for home automation seems to be what it's for. Okay, so I'm going to close out of that one. Close out of this one. I'm going to leave that up for now. Go back home on this. All right. Cool. So, thanks for joining in. Appreciated it. It was nice having the conversation, uh, you know, especially about halfway through when we started gaining a little more momentum, people coming in and saying hello. Really loved it. Uh, thank you all. I hope to see you again. I think I, yeah, I dropped a link to the discord for the beyond code discord. Uh, also check the links in the doobly-doo. That's where I've got creeds of craftsmanship.com web the, the best stuff that I have curated from around the web for developers. Got links to that stuff. I'm, uh, I'm recording JavaScript jabber tomorrow. So shout out to JavaScript Jabber, uh, if you want to tune in for that. Well, you can't really tune in. No, I think we're going to do it live tomorrow. I think. I think we're going to do a YouTube live. So it's devchat.tv is the YouTube channel because it's a network that runs a lot of different podcasts, and JavaScript Jabber is just one of them, along with Ruby Rogues and Adventures in Angular and um, Reasoning with React or, I don't know, React Roundup. React Roundup, that's what it's called. A uh, bunch of the other ones. And there was something else I want to say. Anyway, but y'all have a good night. Uh, feel free to drop me any questions or content requests in the con uh, content request channel in the Discord. Um, yeah, and y'all just have a good one, all right? So like and sub if you want to. Share with someone you like if you liked it. Share with someone you don't like if you didn't like it. And have a great night. Okay. Adios.